Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. God was calling us here and we were like, we're coming. We're going to be obedient to God's call. For us, this was our place called there. The provision for the healing was in this place. And I know our provision for our ministry or what God wants us to do, our purpose is here too. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm starting a brand new series and I'm teaching on my favorite thing to teach on uh, what I call spirit, soul, and body. You know, this is the truth that just transformed my life. And it has become like the foundation of everything I teach. This is, I heard one person describe this like a key that you stick in your brain and it just unlocks the Word of God. It unlocks truth. This is what it did for me. It totally transformed my life. And so, actually, everything I teach comes from this revelation of what I call spirit, soul, and body. That's probably not the best title for this, but I've titled it this because this is the way God spoke it to me. So I'm just sharing it from my own perspective. You know, a good friend of mine, Dwayne Sheriff, has a teaching basically the same thing, and he calls it identity uh, theft. Now, it's either identity thief or identity theft, but it's all talking about your identity and because people don't know who they are and what God has done, that they are confused and therefore Satan is able to come and steal things from them that God has provided. But this, this just totally, totally transformed my life. And man, this is exciting to me. I know that many of you have probably heard me teach on this. I think it was two years ago on our television program that I taught an abbreviated teaching on this. It's been five years since I've taught the entire revelation that God has given me about this, and so I felt like it's appropriate to come back and to teach this. And we have a lot of material that we're offering you this week. Our announcer will go into more detail, but I've got uh, study guides. I've got a book in English and in Spanish. We also have this little illustrated teaching on spirit, soul, and body, and one of my partners in Germany was touched by this so much he wanted to illustrate it primarily for children but actually it's turned out that this is just a great way to get this truth across and he's condensed about six hours of teaching into I think it's either 20 or 25 minute illustrated DVD and it is really awesome. It shows the guy here and he's got kind of a little fat body but then when he gets born again his spirit becomes this buff uh, looking guy and it's just it makes some great points so anyway I'm going to be sharing with you this teaching about who you are in Christ your true identity in Christ and it's what I call spirit soul and body and here's the reason that I've called it that is because Uh, Let me just give a little bit of background to why this was so important and how much this has helped me. And I think that this will help you to understand the benefit that this could be to you. But I got born again when I was eight years old. And I mean, it was a genuine conversion. The very next day in school, on a Monday morning, my friends could tell that I was changed. And I mean, I got born again. I believe that if I was would have died... I would have gone to heaven. I was truly saved at eight years of age. But when I was 18, I had this miraculous encounter with the Lord where His love just flooded into me. And for four and a half months, I was overwhelmed with the love of God. I mean, it was life-changing. I didn't, I didn't sleep more than an hour at a time for four months. I would just nap here and there, but I was so excited. I was just so caught up in the love of God. I couldn't sleep. I never sat down and ate a normal meal because, man, I was so excited. I was studying the Word. I was praying. I was ministering to people. I just grabbed things as I went. I mean, my life was radically, radically changed. But after four and a half months, the emotion, the feel of this experience wore off primarily because I had people criticizing me and coming against me and stuff like this, and I lost the emotional benefit of it, and then panic set in because I didn't know what I did to cause God's love to be manifest in my life. I didn't know what I did to cause it to leave, and I had no clue about how to get it back. And at the time, 
I was thinking I had been taught that God loved me proportional to my performance. If I performed well, if I studied the Word, if I prayed, if I led people to the Lord, if I lived a holy life, then God would bless me. And my whole life had been, up to that point, a performance-based relationship. And yet when God revealed this love to me, it was at the worst time in my life, where for, when for the first time in my life I realized that I was a religious Pharisee, that I was a hypocrite, and I repented. And it was when I was just devastated by my own unworthiness that I experienced this love of God. And as long as I was in this emotional thing, it was okay. But after it was gone, I didn't, I didn't know how to relate to God. I now knew that all of my righteousness was like filthy rags, but how, how could a God, how could a perfect, pure, holy God love me? I didn't love me. For the first time in my life, I'd realized that I'd just been religious, that I'd been a hypocrite, that everything I was doing, it was for my own benefit. I hadn't done anything motivated by love out of a pure heart. It was all selfish, trying to earn God's favor. And I had finally come to the end of myself, and I knew that I had nothing to offer God. How could God love me? And yet, I had this experience where I knew He did, but I was confused. I did not understand. And I, one of the best things that ever happened to me, in hindsight, I didn't see it this way at the time, but in hindsight, I got drafted, and I was sent to Vietnam. And for 13 months, I was in Vietnam, and I was a chaplain's assistant. I wasn't out in the field like what we called the grunts, but I was on a fire support base. We were taking shellings, and there was a number of times that there was some physical danger and things. But as a whole, I just was on this fire support base, and I, I was without a chaplain the majority of the time. I think the first four or five months I was in Vietnam, I had a chaplain, but then he um, you know, left country and went back home, and I was just there by myself. And so... I did nothing all day except just sit there and read the Bible. And in hindsight, it was probably the best thing that could have happened to me because I was taken away from the religious situation that I was in. I was put on this fire support base in Vietnam and out of desperation. There was just so much ungodliness around me. It was like a magnet pulling me towards all of this. You know, there was free dope and just all of the booze that you could have. and. There was all of these things that were pulling on me, and out of desperation, I just had to stick my nose in the Bible and study the Word. And I was reading the Word from 10 to 15 hours a day, just studying the Word, and without realizing it, the Word began to change me. I began to change, effortless change. I've got another teaching on that called Effortless Change. But anyway, the reason I'm giving all of this background is to say that I began to start seeing things different. And one of the things that just transformed my life is this truth I'm going to teach you about spirit, soul, and body. And I began to recognize, according to John 4, 24, that God is a spirit and that those who worship God have to worship in spirit and in truth. I had to relate to God spirit to spirit and that God wasn't looking at my flesh, my outward actions. God wasn't dealing with me based on my performance. But when I got born again, I received a brand new spirit. And I'm going to be expanding and amplifying on this a lot. But when I got this revelation, this is what totally changed me. It totally changed me. And I have seen uh, literally hundreds of thousands of people receive this same revelation and it radically changes their relationship. If I had time, I could give you testimonies. We've actually got some videos of people who this teaching has transformed them and they went out on the mission field and started impacting tens of thousands of people because of the very same thing that God showed me right here. So I'm just saying all of this to say that that's the background. I loved God but I was struggling to understand God's love for me because I looked on the outward appearance. It says in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, Samuel went to anoint a new king. It turned out it was going to be David. But David's father, Jesse, didn't even think enough of David to have him come as one of his sons 
and stand before Samuel. He left David with the sheep. David was the runt of the litter. It says in 1 Samuel chapter 16 that he was ruddy. And the word ruddy, there's some debate about what that means. But it, it uh, refers to red. They think he was either red-haired or with a red complexion that he was beautiful to look at. In other words, he was a mama's boy. And here was Samuel coming to anoint the next king, the previous king, the current king at that time, was Saul. And he was a head taller than any other person in the nation. He was this huge specimen of a man. And here was David, this runt, a ruddy, a beautiful boy. Jesse didn't even think enough of him to put his name in the hat. He brought all of the other brothers in, but Samuel said, it's none of them. And God spoke to him, 1 Samuel 16, 7, and says, don't look on the height of his stature or any of these things, because man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. That's the way that God is. God looks at you on the heart level. And yet, I was trying to relate to God based on my performance. Based on God, am I doing enough? Have I prayed enough? Have I studied enough? Am I living holy enough? And because of that, my, my performance was failing. And some of you think, well, you just weren't as good as I am. No, the Bible says in Romans 3.23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 5, verses 14 through the end of the chapter, five different times it just talks about that we've all come short, that all of us are condemned. There, you cannot relate to God on the basis of your performance. And yet this is what I was doing, and I believe that this is one of the greatest mistakes made in the body of Christ today is that people are saying, God, I've done this and this and this. I go to church. I pay my tithes. I study the Word. I'm living holy. Now have I done enough? Will you heal me? Will you prosper me? You need what I'm teaching here on spirit, soul, and body because God is a spirit, and to really connect with God, you've got to do it spirit to spirit, not body to spirit. And see, I only understood that there was two parts of me. Obviously, there's, I've got a physical body. You can feel your physical body, whether it's hot, whether it's cold, whether it's tired. You can look at it in the mirror. You can see it. But there's another part of you that can't be seen or felt in a physical way. And that's your, in what we call our personality, this inner man. The Bible calls that the soul, the mental, the emotional part of you, your personality. You know, if a person came up and touched you on the shoulder, you could physically feel it. You could even be looking the other direction and not paying any attention to them. But if they touched you on the shoulder, you could feel it. But did you know a person could not be with you physically, and yet there could, they could say words to you. They could send you a text. They could say something. And those words, you can feel it. Not in your physical body. There's another part to you, and that's your soul, your mental, your emotional part of you. Every one of us are aware of those two parts. But what changed my life is when I realized there was a third part to me, and that's my spirit. And here's the verse that God used to unlock this to me. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I remember reading that. And I said, Father, I know that I am in Christ. I know that I'm born again. I got born again when I was eight years old. And when I was 18, I had this experience where the love of God just overwhelmed me. I said, I know that I know you. I had zero doubt that if I was to die, if something would have happened to me in Vietnam, I would have gone to be with the Lord. I knew it. I had zero doubt. So I knew that I was in Christ. And yet it says that you're a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. It didn't say all things are in the process of becoming new. You will hear people interpret it that way because what they're doing is trying to take what the Word of God says and compare it to what they see and what they feel. And they try and make these two things mesh and fit together. And so they will say, well, all things aren't new yet, but they are becoming new. That's not what this says. You can go into the Greek on this. You can study it any way you want to. This is not saying that all things are in the process of becoming new. And it didn't just say that some things or the majority of things or a lot of things have become new. No, it says all things. 
all things. It says again, if you are in Christ, old things are passed away. They aren't passing away. They have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And I remember reading this verse, and I just, you know, put the Bible down, and I was praying and saying, Lord, I know that I'm born again. I know that you love me. I have a relationship with you. I know that I am in Christ. And yet I started looking at my life, and old things hadn't passed away. All things hadn't become new. Because, see, I was looking on the outside. I was an introvert. It was hard for me to talk to people. I felt constantly like there was people that God wanted me to witness to, that I was too shamed, I was too embarrassed, too timid to do it. I failed. I, you know... And it's not that I was, uh, uh, relative to other people, it's not that I was a terrible person. But you know what? Other people aren't my standard. Compared to the Word of God, again, Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. God is not comparing you to me or to somebody else. God is comparing you to Jesus, the glory of God. And if you compare yourself to Jesus, you have sinned and come short. You can never relate to God. You can never do enough to be accepted with God. If you are just thinking that God is looking at you on your external, on your actions and your thought life, and if this is all you acknowledge that there is to you, well, then you're never going to feel like 2 Corinthians 5.17 is a reality in your life. You're never going to be perfect in your body, in your actions. You will never be perfect in your thought and if you are just, if you're honest, you're going to be confused at the very least. And at the, at the worst, you could literally just say, well, man, I just can't believe the Bible. I, it's not true. I can't see it in my life. And that's kind of where I was. I was reading this. It says old things are passed away. They're already done. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. And I couldn't see it. And so I was just saying, God, What's the answer to this? How do, I, how do I understand this? I know I'm born again, and yet what the Word is saying about me, I cannot observe it in my life. And the thing that changed my life, I was reading a book, and a man just in passing, I was very critical and skeptical about what he was saying. So as he, as he was making his points, I looked up every scripture reference that he had, and he made something, a statement similar to, that it's your spirit that was born again, not your body and not your soul. And when he said that, man, that just shocked me. I looked up the reference, and it was this reference, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, and all of a sudden the light began to dawn on me. And what really changed me was recognizing I was three parts. Prior to that time, again, it's obvious that you've got a physical body. It's obvious that there's a part of you that is beyond just your physical body. You've got an emotional part. But I honestly thought that the spirit and soul were just the same thing. They were just different words referring to the same thing. If you look up the word spirit in the Greek, in the Strong's Concordance, the word pneuma is what it is, and it will literally define it as the immortal soul. So even Strong's Concordance defines the spirit as the immortal soul. It doesn't make a distinction between them. But let me turn over and show you another verse that the Lord showed me in 1 uh, Thessalonians chapter 5 and in verse 23. He was praying a prayer and he says, The very God of peace sanctify you wholly. That's W-H-O-L-L-Y. Not holy, H-O-L-Y, but completely and I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And when I saw this, it just rocked me to my core because, again, I had always referred to the inner part, the part that you can't see but you can feel it, your personality, your feelings, your emotions. I thought that that was spirit and soul were just two different words for referring to it. But this verse makes it very clear that you have a spirit soul, and body. You are a three-part being, not a two-part being. And God is a spirit. John 4, 24 says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit 
and in truth. You have to connect with God through your spirit, not through your soul and not through your body. God is a spirit. God is looking at you and me spirit to spirit, not spirit to flesh, spirit to body. God is not dealing with you based on your actions. He isn't dealing with you based on just your thought life. Now, He's aware of those areas. You are a complete being, spirit, soul, and body. But the real you, when you got born again, it was your spirit that got born again, not your body. You still have the same body. If you were a man before you got born again, you're going to be a man after you get born again. I don't care what you feel like on any given day. There is a DNA, there are chromosomes in every cell of your body, and they are either male chromosomes or female chromosomes. It doesn't matter how you feel and how you choose to identify on a certain day. If you were a male before you got born again, you're going to be a male after you get born again. If you were a female, you'll be a female. If you were fat, you're going to still be fat unless you go on a diet. You, your body doesn't get changed. This is important that you understand this. We've got promises in the scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 talks about this mortal must put on immortality. This corruptible must put on incorruption. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, that we shall not all sleep, talking about death, but we shall all be changed in the moment and the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, I think maybe that's 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But anyway, those are scriptures I'm quoting to you. And your physical body has been purchased and it's going to be changed. But right now, you don't have a glorified body. You still have the same body, maybe with a few alterations. Maybe you've gained some weight, gotten older, your hair color's changed or something. But you are still the same physical body that you had before you got saved. You can tell that by observation. And it's not your mental, emotional part that got saved. When you got born again, you didn't get a brand new mind. You still have the same mind. You still got the same memories. You still got the same deficits. If you haven't trained yourself and if you, there's something you didn't know, you just don't automatically know all things. But the Bible promises us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that there is coming a day when we will know all things even as also we are known. That hadn't happened yet. Your mind isn't changed. So your body and your mind haven't changed. So what part of you has changed? What part of you became brand new, where old things are passed away, all things are become new? It's talking about your spirit. And I'm going to share a lot of scriptures with you. I'm running out of time today. But when God showed me this, I just began to delve into this and research it, and I found out that in Christ, in my born-again spirit, I am brand new, and I have all of His power, all of His ability. God sees me differently. All of my sin is gone. There is no sin in my spirit, even when I sin. Now, that may shock some of you, but I'm going to explain this and go into more detail on it. But because of this, I can have boldness to enter into the very presence of God because I'm a brand new person in Christ. Got a lot more to share on this. Again, I want to encourage you to please get this teaching on spirit, soul, and body. I have it in English, Spanish. I have study guides in English and Spanish. We have CDs. They were taken from... Uh, a meeting, a live teaching, a DVDs, DVDs that were made from television, and we have this dramatization, an illustrated teaching on spirit, soul, and body. Listen to our announcer, and please call or write today. I believe Esther is the true, original Cinderella story. Not only did she conquer the heart of the king, she saved her people from annihilation. Oh! Esther's secret weapon was not her beauty, but her heart. Andrew's complete teaching titled Spirit, Soul, and Body is available in a CD as seen on TV, DVD, or in a live DVD album, as well as a book, audiobook, or study guide. Also available is the Spirit, Soul, and Body Illustrated DVD. This unique DVD illustrates the main points of the entire teaching in a few short minutes. 
This exciting tool makes it easy to introduce Andrew's foundational teaching to anyone, even a child. Andrew himself has been amazed at how quickly and clearly this teaching can be brought to life through animation. You can get these products in the Spirit, Soul, and Body package. This package includes the CD or DVD album, the book, audiobook, study guide, as well as the Spirit, Soul, and Body Illustrated DVD. This package has a catalog value of $110, but you can get it today for only $79. The Spirit, Soul, and Body book is available for a gift of any amount when you write or call. We encourage everyone to give because there's a blessing in giving. But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide this book free of charge. We want to say a special thank you to the Grace Partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your gifts make it possible to put free ministry materials into the hands of many people in need. If you're not already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. You can become a Grace Partner or order resources through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. Or call our helpline Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time at 719-635-1111. I'd like to invite you to come to our Women's Arise Conference. It's November the 7th through the 9th. I'm not going to be there, but some of my best friends, Carly Terradez, Pastor Sue Sheriff, Pastor Sheris Johnson, and Dorothy Brown. That's James Brown's wife. I tell you, she's become a great friend. These are some powerful women. You'll be blessed. It's going to be a great conference, November 7th through the 9th, Women Arise in Woodland Park, Colorado at our Caris facilities. I'd like to encourage you to check out our inside story on our website. This is where we interview people behind the scenes, tell you about things going on with Caris Bible College, Andrew Womack Ministries. We interview people. We talk about outreaches that we have. We have years worth of inside stories archived there. We put out a new one every month. Go check it out at awmi.net and then check on the inside story. It'll be a blessing to you. I'd like to invite you to join with me through World Outreach. This is what we call all of our ministry outside of Colorado Springs here in our Bible College. We are reaching out all around the world and one of the ways we do this is through translations. And we now have my discipleship evangelism translated into 31 languages with more coming online. And this just cost a lot of money to do. We put my animated or illustrated spirit, soul, and body teaching and put in into uh, Chinese. And there's just so much more to do, but it costs money. We would like to ask you to become a part of it. Help us get the Word of God out through these translations. Mm -hmm.